Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Lions franchise here on Madden 22, featuring that PS5. Of course, you'll absolutely love to see it. And we got four games left here in the regular season. And surprisingly for us, we are actually still in the thick of things as we go ahead check out the standings here for uh at least the nfc because that's really uh, all we really care about right now the cowboys they've already clinched a playoff and it looks like they are going to end up with the number one seed and get one of the buys meanwhile the minnesota vikings are actually on track for that as well but look at who the number seven seed as of right now the atlanta falcons at six and seven if the season ended today would have that seventh and final playoff spot in the nfc and not only that you know we got a big log jam as well the eagles the saints the seahawks the giants the, the lions and also the la rams are in here as well the washington football team and the cardinals you know they're not completely out of it either but this is going to be a big episode, man. We're going to go ahead and make this a double header because we do have a breakout player opportunity. Help him upgrade his dev, dev trait. And it looks like the Sean Hand is actually uh, been given the opportunity to go ahead and get a um, you know an increase to his dev trait. If we can hold the Cardinals to less than 100 yards rushing or the Sean Hand can get an interception, a forced fumble. Uh, a TFL or a sack. So if he does any of those four things, um, he'll get improvement to his dev trait. We'll love to see that. But with that being said, though, let's go ahead and get this double, you know, header action going here as we try to ramp things up here at the end of the regular season. Got a good one here, man. So if you're excited for it, make sure you leave a like on this video and then. If you like what you're seeing here on the channel and you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and also check out the rest of the content that I have here on this channel, man. I'm not just a Madden guy. I also got some other stuff here on the channel as well that I think you would enjoy. But with that being said, let's see if we can go 2-0 here in this episode. So we do know what is at stake. So let's see if we can go ahead and get right to work here as... These Arizona Cardinals, they are on the move quickly. They, we got a red zone opportunity here in this first quarter. We got to keep them out of the end zone. Third and long. We need our defense to hold up here as Kyle Murray. He's going to do his thing. He's going to end up scrambling to the outside and find his favorite target in DeAndre Hopkins. And that is not what we wanted whatsoever. A first and goal situation coming for us here as Kyler Murray will drop back, throw it into the end zone, and probably one of the easier touchdowns we'll see this entire season. Uh, Andy Isabella able to slip through, find a hole in our zone. And we're down 14-7 as of right now. So we're looking to get a drive going of our own. Third and four, looking for TJ Hawkinson, but he did end up being pretty well covered there on that third down throw so now gonna be bringing out kicking unit and hey we're at least keeping up with the Arizona Cardinals right now but we're gonna need a lot more points than that in this game we know that this Cardinal offense is pretty damn explosive is now third and one Kyler Murray going on the read option it was defended relatively well. Jamie Collins able to get in there and make the tackle for us. But it is going to be for a first and goal. Is now Kyler Murray in the shotgun. Going to drop back the pass once again. Roll to the outside. And Tim Walker gets lost in the man coverage. It's yet another touchdown here for the Arizona Cardinals. We're down 21-10. As we do get the ball back here. We got about a minute left here in this first half. Trying to make something shake here. How about this to get us going? TJ Hawkinson getting wide butt naked open down the field. And we got ourselves a drive now here, ladies and gentlemen. We got three timeouts left to work with as well. Got to make it happen as Goff 
Dropping back, looking around, trying to throw over the middle, but it's going to be deflected away. We were trying to find TJ Hawkinson, but it's no good. It's now second and 10 again. Goff throwing over the middle. That's almost intercepted as well, trying to get it to Tyrell Williams this time around. And it leads to a third and long here. Got to try to throw for it here on first down, but Tyrell Williams just could not hang on to it. But we will go ahead and cut into the second half here as we still have a chance to go ahead and tie this game. Just need to find somebody to get open. We find Tyrell Williams on a third down that takes us inside the five-yard line, but there's a penalty. There's a penalty on us. Jared Goff's going to be called for an illegal forward pass. <sighs> man, that is awful. I can't believe that ended up happening for us here, man. So that means we got to go out. We just settle in for yet another field goal. And Matt Wright has certainly been on the money. That one's going to be good as well. 21-16, to 16, but... At some point here, we need a touchdown. We need our run game to get going, but none of that is happening for us here right now. Our run game is getting shut down pretty hard as of right now. J.J. Watt got a little shaken up after the play, but they got that fourth down stop for us anyways. And now we're in deep trouble. If we allow a touchdown here, this could very much be barbecue chicken. Not only for the game, but potentially our season depending on what happens around the NFL as well as taking the stats for the Arizona Cardinals. They usually average a, they're, they're actually close to the bottom in terms of yards gained. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. And how about this? Okura coming in there, making the tackle. And that's what we need now. Third and six. Got to make a stand on defense. Murray. Dropping back, looking around, going to try and maybe scramble for it. No, he's actually going to go ahead, throw this football away. Although there is yet another penalty, thankfully. It is on the Arizona Cardinals, though. And so they will be going ahead. They will be putting out their field goal unit. And here we go, man. Got a fourth and six. Going to be up, and it is going to be good. So now not only do we need a touchdown, we need to get a two-point conversion here as well. Got to make it happen. We'll see if we can do just as first and ten. Thrown to the outside for Brashard Barriman. Able to pick up seven yards while getting out of bounds too. It stops the clock for the time being. It's now second and three coming up. Goff dropping back, faces some pressure, but able to escape the pocket though. He's going to try to get out of bounds, and he does. Huge first down for the Lions. And we're here at the two-minute warning now, trying to punch it in. Third and goal. Goff dropping back, looking around, trying to dart it in there to Bashar Perriman. And it's a touchdown for the Lions. And not only that as well, but we will end up getting the two-point conversion. Game is all tied up at 24 apiece. So now, if we can get one more stop, we can get this ball back, we could definitely go ahead and win this game. And, oh, we needed that interception. It was right there, but it was out of his hands. And now, second and ten. Okuda trying to play two guys at once. You know, had to, you know, leave the underneath, man. DeAndre Hopkins is a more dangerous weapon. But now the Cardinals are going no huddle here. You know, with 122 left to play. They want to make sure that they get in field goal range before we go ahead and start seeing some timeouts being used by this offense. Is now second and 10 coming up here. They're actually going to run it with James Conner. And that is going to be probably more than enough to get into field goal range. Going to basically hope maybe, you know, there be some bad clock management. Or better yet, you know, we can ice this kicker and they don't end up getting it. But James Conner ends up picking up a first down. They draw ever closer. And they're inside the 25-yard line. So they will be attempting this kick right here. If they make this, this game is over. This would send us two games under 500. It is up and it is gone. 
the Arizona Cardinals in heartbreaking fashion, man. They end up beating us here by a final score of 27 to 24. It's certainly a really tough one to swallow at the end of the day. And it will be considered our eighth loss of the season. Tough. So while we were at the very least competitive and we did all that we could do, we still end up losing this game anyways. Last second field goal, man. That's always stuff that's going to definitely hurt us down the road. But Jared Goff actually did not have a bad day, though. 24 for 36, 250 yards, two touchdowns, and no picks. So Jared Goff, at the very least, was really efficient with the football. But... We did have a pretty tough time getting our run game going. DeAndre Swift, he only ended up with 41 yards off of 13 carries. Goff wasn't too bad on the ground either, close to 6 yards per carry. But then checking out our wide receivers just to see what was going down. Brashad Perriman actually led the team in catches today. He ended up with 9 catches for 56 yards and ended up getting in the, in the end zone. That did allow us the opportunity to tie this ball game, which we did. Um, and then Tyrell Williams did also go ahead. Had four catches for four yards. Also had a touchdown as well. TJ Hawkinson had three catches for 50 yards. As for our defense, you know, the defense, you know, it did what it could do. You know, it's still a young football team. Um, so that was that was tough to see, you know, us not getting that big stop here at the end. But Clinton Dunbar did end up leading the team in tackles. He ended up with eight total tackles on the day. With Jeff Okudo not too far behind, six total tackles, but Definitely a little bit concerning seeing our both two of our defensive backs leading the team in tackles. You know, we definitely got shredded quite a bit, particularly in the past game, dealing with Kyle Murray and the weapons that he has on the offensive side of the football. Checking out some of the TFLs just to see if uh, Deshaun Hand did end up getting his, um, you know, his goal, you know, in order to increase his dev trait. Uh, Romeo Okura had multiple TFLs and Godwin. Oh, bouquet, I believe is how you say it. I probably butchered that. Um, three TFLs as a team. We also ended up with three total tackles. Um, actually, no, we had more than one sack. Uh, let's see, Michael Brockers had a sack, half a sack, and so did Jamie Collins. Meanwhile, we did not force any interceptions today, and, but we did have a forced fumble. Jason Cabina actually seems like he forced a fumble, maybe in like the special teams or something like that. But I don't, we did not get any foam recoveries. And that does mean that the shot hand will not get his dev trait increased. Okay, so actually, I am a little mistaken. The shot hand actually did end up getting an upgrade to his uh, development trait. He goes from normal to that star trait. And that was because we did hold the Cardinals to less than 100 yards rushing. Granted, they did not run the football all that, that much at all you know they're more of a pass heavy air raid kind of team so that was kind of a given but hey Deshaun Han at least gets his star trade and you know he actually does move up to 76 overall as well so pretty solid player definitely still pretty young only 25 years old you know I like what I'm seeing from Deshaun Han you know when he's in the game but with that being said, though, we are now 6-8 and eight, thanks to that loss to the Arizona Cardinals at home. So this second half of the episode, this second game that we're about to play against the Atlanta Falcons, this is a must win for us. They're 6-8 and eight as well. And honestly, in my opinion, if we do not end up winning this game right now, we will end up probably not making the playoffs, which... To be fair, that's kind of what I expected here in season number one because we are not a very good team. Uh, probably one of the worst rosters in the NFL, to be honest. But that being said, though, let's see if we can take care of business against the Atlanta Falcons here and see if we can go ahead and keep those playoff hopes alive. So that being said, let's go get it. So with the loss in the first part of this episode, that does mean... We lose this game. This se our season is going to be over. We're going to be eliminated from playoff contention. So we got to come out with some heat. Let's see if we can match the moment here. As Kyle Pitts, he's going to get a catch here. That's going to get them into the red zone. This offense still has some firepower. Even with the loss of Julio Jones as we blow that thing up in the backfield. Let's go, baby. You love to see it here, man. And it's going to make it. 
Second and 14 now coming up here. Matt Ryan dropping back on a throw over the middle. Finds Kyle Pitts once again. This man's going to be a problem. You saw his stats from last week. 12 catches, 93 yards, and two tubs. He's going to certainly be a problem for our secondary and our linebackers. And but we do get a fumble. Let's go, baby. We land on that thing. That's exactly what we needed, especially with our quarterback struggling right now. He has 22 interceptions, man. If we if we don't make the playoffs, I don't think Jared Goff's going to be on this team next season, man. I I just don't see it. You know, I don't think he's the future of this team necessarily. He almost throws another pick there, but TJ Hawkinson able to at least make a one-man miss. Completes the first pass for 14. Let's see if we can go ahead and complete yet another pass here. It's third and short. Goff over to the left-hand side, but it's going to be incomplete. We did have to punt this football away, but later on in the first quarter, though, our defense gets put in a really good spot, you know, got us some really good field position to work with. Let's see if this is enough for us to go ahead and strike first in this game. That was something that we did not do against the Cardinals earlier in this episode. A second and five, we cut up the middle of the field. DeAndre Swift, can he get in the end zone? No, he does not. But that being said, though, first and goal coming up for us here, man. Let's see if we can punch it in with Jared Goff and company. Goff dropping back. He's looking around. Going to go ahead and just glide himself into the end zone, man. Touchdown, Lions. And we will end up striking first here. We get up 7 to nothing. But look at this, man. Our defense continues to put us in some amazing field position. I absolutely love to see it. Is now first and goal coming up. Goff going to try to hit him with a play action. Dropping back. Going to look over to his right. Trying to run it in. He's actually going to go for it. And look at that. Jared Goff is going to go ahead and get his second running touchdown of the ball game. Let's go, man. So we're now up 14 to nothing as a result of it. And look at this two-minute warning here. We have a chance to pour it on some more as Quintez Javis gets us some more yards downfield. Going ahead and picking up a first down. Is now first and ten. Goff sitting around in the pocket. We're going to try to throw a quick on the curl. And oh, my. Look at those hops right there. How did he manage to get that? Man, that is insane. Trying to go for Tyrell Williams. Thought we had it open, but just, just great cover skills. I, I don't know if I could even be mad at it. I just wish our guys could have been able to do something like that. But that clearly cannot happen for us here. As we do come to the second half, we got a fourth and goal. And how about this to make up for the interception? A big throw down the middle of the field for Tyrell Williams. They blitz everybody and their mother. And gave an open throw to Tyrell Williams. And after that, it just became a foot race. Nobody was really able to catch him after that. And look at this lead that we have built up. 21 to nothing, 21 to 6. And we got the backs against the wall for the Atlanta Falcons. They're also fighting for playoff eligibility as well. But not giving up, though, as Calvin Ridley is going to be able to make that catch. And it's going to be an automatic first down as a result of it. As it cuts it later in the drive now. First and goal. Ryan going over to the left-hand side. And it's Kyle Pitts with a touchdown. The first one of the day for him. They probably will go for two here to see if they can go ahead and tie this game up. But for some reason, like the Madden moments didn't let us play the two-point conversions. Um, but it is what it is, though. Is now 21 to 19. Goff dropping back, throwing over to left hand side, getting it out to DJ Hackinson once again. He has been a target that has re emerged in our offense here in the latter parts of our season. Is now second and six. Now we got great field position. All we got to do, literally, just don't turn the football over. You got one job, my guy. 
do not give the football back to the Atlanta Falcons without getting some points on the board, preferably a touchdown, so that we can actually go ahead and put this thing away and let's go. How about that? Another touchdown for Tyrell Williams' second one on the day. And that just might be the dagger that we are looking for. And look at this. Falcons continuing to struggle on defense. You know, we don't even need this touchdown to win the game. We got it pretty good over here. But how about this attack on some extra points? DeAndre Swift getting into the end zone himself. He's going to go ahead and put some uh, more icing on the cake here at the end of the day. So I certainly like to see that. And it leaves the Falcons with just one last chance here. It probably is not going to really affect who's going to win or lose at this point. You know, just trying to make the scoreboard look a little bit better than how this game actually turned out for us. We played significantly better in this game. And it gives us a victory. And because we beat the Falcons, not only do we get to keep our playoff hopes alive here with two games left in the regular season, but we do also effectively eliminate the Atlanta Falcons. At least we play spoiler. So here, you know, we end up taking care of business, man. We end up winning our seventh game of the season after all. But looking into the box score, this was actually a pretty messy game when it all comes down to it. Both teams ended up with four turnovers. So really, neither of us necessarily wanted to win this game. But, you know, we ended up coming out on top. And that's what I like to see overall. Checking out the stats for Jared Goff. And... Jared Goff wasn't necessarily as sharp as he was in, you know, the first game in this episode. 19 for 31 for 220 yards. Did have two touchdowns, but also threw three interceptions. Now, to be fair, Jared Goff did also find the end zone twice on the ground, despite the fact that he only had, like, four yards rushing. Then DeAndre Swift ended up finding the end zone as well. He ended up with 129 yards on the ground ended up getting into the end zone as well and that score by deandre swift helped us steal the deal meanwhile for our receivers tyro williams was borderline unstoppable it seemed like he only had four catches but he did have 76 yards and two touchdowns he had both touchdown passes from jared goff dj hawkinson also had a pretty solid game himself the third year pro did end up getting five catches for 57 yards in this one as well and then also being said the defense did a much better job as well jeff okuda did lead a team in tackles he had 10 total tackles in this one y'all with jamie collins not too far behind eight tackles in this one uh jeff okuda did also have a tfl in this one so a really good game for the second year pro out of ohio state i really like to see that moving forward we also got to the quarterback quite a few times as well, which is really promising to see Julian Acora and Michael Brockers combine for three sacks in this one with Jamie Collins. Also able to go ahead and get a sack in this game as well. Will Harris had an interception and was able to take it for 16 yards, but we did force three fumbles in this game. Jelani Tavai, Amani Awurie, and Jamie Collins did have forced fumbles. We recovered two of them. At least two. No, we recovered all three fumbles. Twenty to buy. Amari Uluye and Ali McNeil, our rookie out of NC State, also did end up recovering a fumble in this one. Uh, he didn't do anything else in the game, but hey, you know, helping generate those turnovers, it helps keep our playoff hopes alive, man. So we do go ahead and move on to week number seventeen in the regular season, and. It does seem like there's a new team at, no, at that number seven spot now. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Green Bay is at six. And the Minnesota Vikings are currently in that second seed right now. We'll go ahead and check out the standings here as we have two games left here. Before we go ahead and you know, go into postseason play. And this is what stands are looking right now. Cowboys did go ahead and quench home field advantage. It looks like they might have quenched the best record in the entire nfl um the vikings did also end up clinching they did at least clinch a playoff berth so two of the seven playoff berths have officially been locked up if the 49ers win 
they will go ahead and see, uh, you know go to the playoffs as well. But then there is a log jam here still. They got got the Panthers, Packers, and Seahawks at eight and seven with the Buccaneers. They're the seven seed right now. They're eight and seven as well. We are in this next tier of seven and eight teams with the Philadelphia Eagles, New Orleans Saints, the us and the LA Rams. We're not eliminated yet, but I really do think we need to win out here before uh, for us to go ahead and go to the playoffs. And even then, that's not going to be guaranteed either. But that being said, next episode, we will actually play a full game. We will take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are currently 8-7 and seven in the NFC West. And they are a team... You know, that also has not quenched their playoff berth. So a big game for both of us here. It should be a really good one. So make sure you smash that like button for us. And if you haven't done so already, hit me up down in the comments below. I love interacting with you guys. And of course, if you're brand new and you made it all the way to the end of this video, what are you waiting for, man? Hit that subscribe button. It's free. And you can always unsubscribe if you're not feeling me later. So... With that being said, this is John J. Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.